So this is lesson eight in the Android learning path. Um, we are going to talk about how to load individual plugins. So before we do that, let's have a look through our project and make sure we know what we mean when we say plugins. So if you look at the source code um, that came with your project download, you will see a Java file for each individual screen type or plugin that's included in your project. So depending on the kind of plugin that you're using, most of them start with BT underbar screen, but if it's a plugin made by another um, another third-party plugin, it might not be called that. It could be called anything, or maybe you made the plugin yourself. But the point is, is this particular plugin is the Java file that will load when um, you tap a button or a menu item or something like that in your application. And so the configuration file that we talked about in the previous lesson, this is what tells um, your Android application what type of screen to load. So if you look at the item type tag or property in this screen object right here, you'll see that the item type is BT screen menu list simple. So that means that the class file that loads that type of screen is going to be called BT screen menu list simple. Right, where will it be? Right there. So the type, the item type in the JSON data in our configuration file tells our software which type of plugin or which type of screen to load. So we're going to do something here to demonstrate to you um, how easy it is to see what's happening and what types of screens loading. So let's go to our window option and let's show view. I'm going to choose other so that I can get to the log cat. Let's get the log cat opening. And let's get our simulator running over here, or let's bring our simulator over here. I'm going to shrink down Eclipse so that we can run Eclipse on one side and the simulator on the other side. And we'll be able to see in our log cat what type of screen is being created or instantiated. So I'm going to look at Buzz Touch Messages. I'm going to go over here to the simulator and I'm going to click Harbor Location Map. And just as expected, you can see that in our Buzz Touch Messages list, this is the menu tab. This is where the application read the type of screen data from the configuration file. And then this right here is where the screen map begins to get created. And then it gets loaded into um, the view and gets the activity gets loaded and transitioned into view and off we go. So let's slow that down a little bit and redo it and revisit exactly what's going on. I went through that very very quickly on purpose just to demonstrate to you um, how it works but let's go back and revisit each one of these lines one by one so that we know what's going on. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that our log cat is a little bit bigger. I'm going to clear our console I'm going to go back to that menu screen. Okay, so here's where we were. I'm going to go back to that menu, menu screen and I'm going to tap this top menu item in the list and then it's going to produce that same buzz touch messages output and then we're going to look at it line by line. So the first line of output on, in the log cat is going to show us that this screen, the one that's showing right now is the screen menu list, it's going to sh um, show as the top one. And then the application is going to create the map screen and then try to display it. So we'll look and see what happens when we tap that item. Um, again, line by line, we'll look at these messages. So I'm going to cover up our simulator and make this a little bit bigger so that we can see a little bit more. And we're going to talk about this. So the screen menu list simple file ran a method called handle item tap. And that item tap um, was connected to a screen with this item ID. So that menu item knows that it should load a screen with this item ID. So if we were to look at our JSON data and we were to look at the ID of the map screen right there, it would match that ID. So menu tapped, load that screen. Those are the instructions. So then the BT application file which is right here, ran a method called get screen data by item ID. And that's the item ID, the same ID for that screen. So the application 
file is going to read the data associated with this map screen and then it's going to tell us hey I found the screen and it's and it's a map so I'm getting ready to load a map and its nickname is harbor location map so then the application finished reading the data for that and then the next file that that took over was a file called BTACT controller that's buzz touch activity controller so we could find the buzz touch activity controller file right here and there's a method called load screen object so the application loaded the data for this map screen and then the BT activity controller its job is to actually um, instantiate the map and then display it on the screen so it called the BT screen map on create method didn't actually call it directly it just instantiated a new map screen and because it's an Android activity it auto Android automatically called the on create and then the BT view utilities file processed some code and updated the background color and then it updated the navigation bar and then the BT screen map class again ran the on start um, method remember Android calls on start on create on resume all those lifecycle events and the BT screen map ran a, a method called parse screen data and the BT screen map um, ran a method called show map pins it actually did that twice and I won't get into why but it did that method two times and then it stopped so leaving that on the screen right here when I hit the back button more output is going to display to this logcat console and this was the last line we looked at right here and then we hit the back button and now all these lines of um, code were shown in our logcat so we can use the logcat to see how individual screens are loaded and unloaded so let's take this one step further and do do a little hack in here just for fun so remember our list of screens up here in the configuration data we just loaded this screen map with this ID because this ID was connected to the menu item where we said load screen with item ID and we put the map screens item ID in there. And of course this was all done from the control panel. But let's do this. Let's copy the JSON data for this map and paste it in here. And let's make a new screen just right in the JSON, just, just manually. So let's give this i this new this new screen that we're going to make a new ID, uh, my new ID. We had to change the ID because we can't have two things in our JSON data with the same ID. Now instead of the item type for this new screen that we're going to make, instead of leaving it as BT screen map, let's load another one of these screens like BT screen blank. And I'm doing I'm choosing the blank one on purpose just for fun, but I'm just going to show you that when we tap this menu item. Instead of loading this ID, we're going to load our new ID. We'll attach this ID to our top menu item. And it will now load this plugin instead of this plugin. So let's give our, let's change the nickname of our new screen. We'll call this blank screen as the nickname. Let's change the navigation bar um, text to my blank screen. And then these other properties that we that we had copied that are still in here from our map, they're not used in the blank screen plugin or screen type. So we're just going to get rid of all of those. They're not related to this type of a plugin. So different types of screens will have different types of properties. But I just saved that JSON data. I'm going to rerun this project. And I'm going to demonstrate how with one simple adjustment that we did manually, um, we're going to load the a totally different screen type based on just one simple little one simple little adjustment okay it said I had an error loading this screen data do I have a typo somewhere ah, I do have a typo so you see I put a parenthesis there instead of a closing curly brace so let's try that again we will launch the um, application in the simulator and then once it once it launches in the simulator we're gonna get the same menu it's going to say the same thing, but tapping that top row, instead of loading the map, it's going to load a screen with an ID of my new ID right here. And then because my new ID is this type of an item, it'll load this file right 
here instead of the map. So let's give that a whirl and see what happens. There you go, my blank screen. And we can verify in our log cat. Let me erase that and do that again. We can verify in our log cat that the software is instantiating a blank screen object right here. And it's running the on create. And then we're setting up the background and the nav bar and all that kind of stuff for the blank screen. So that's a demonstration of how um, the BuzzTouch application logic is set up and, and how you can use um, the log cat to understand which plugins are loading and how you can um, do this manual if you want, not even use your control panel. So hopefully that was helpful and we will see you in the next lesson.